Would you like me to introduce you tonight? No. Tonight, just enjoy the show. What do a neo-Nazi, a magician, and the Incredible Hulk have in common? I, I don't know. Nothing. Nothing. Come on, get in the right. I have to know the answer to this question. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for Edward Norton's top ten performances. Only the best. Number ten. Bill and Brady Kincaid, Leaves of Grass. It's not gonna work. Why? Well, for one thing, because you've given yourself the stupidest haircut in human history. Oh, bullshit, you ain't that fancy. Can't hardly tell the difference. Whenever an actor pulls off two distinct roles in one film, attention must be paid. Hey, hey, don't get around. Stop. Like squeeze that Jesus. Norton returns to his dual personality roots as a pair of estranged brothers brought together under bizarre circumstances. What do you, what do you want? Brady, I mean, what do you f want? I just want to see my brother who I love. What's the crime? Each is a genius in his own way. Bill's an elite professor who's erased his southern upbringing. Brady's a hick who grows the greatest weed in the south. But both showcase the best of Ed Norton. I get to keep on smoking until the baby comes. And then it's cold her yeah, on that, too. But me and both is going double fisted till the bottom drops out, ain't we? <laughs> oh, what a, what a, what a great time. Uh, Mr. Flint? Number nine. Alan Isaacman, The People versus Larry Flint. Who are you? Uh, Alan Isaacman. I'm your lawyer. His role as this real-life lawyer to the stars was only Norton's second ever feature film appearance, but it's another acting masterclass. The problem you've got is very definitely what I know best, and I am good at what I do. What, are you specialize in porn? As the Hustler founder's attorney and companion, Norton's young lawyer does his level best to rise above his client's outbursts and provides first-rate support for his fellow castmates. Do you think that gives you license to mock the leaders of great religious movements? Well, goddamn right. Larry, no, objection, Your Honor. This is totally irrelevant. Although he's reluctantly justifying Flint's questionable choices, his courtroom monologue extolling the virtues of free speech is particularly compelling. If we start throwing up walls against what some of us think is obscene, we may very well wake up one morning and realize that walls have been thrown up in all kinds of places that we never expected. Number eight, Walter Fain, The Painted Veil. Proving he's as effective in big budget blockbusters as he is in low key period dramas, Norton dives into the role of a bacteriologist who sent to manage the Chinese cholera epidemic with his unloving wife in tow. We could stop up here under the trees, but I'd like to press on if it's all right with you. Certainly my comforts of no concern to you. Right. Then we'll continue. Known for his hands-on approach to filmmaking, Norton played producer and screenwriter on the film, helping to build a complex character that was both cruel and selfless, kind and callous. If they come in, they'll contaminate everything. We've got to keep them outside the town. The vein! Eisenheim. Number seven, Eisenheim, the Illusionist. As awe-inspiring as ever, Norton magically takes on the title role in this mystical period piece. Aided by a noble supporting cast, he helps tell the pain story of a magician whose love is destined for someone else. Then why bring her back? Just to be with her. His work in both the lavish onstage performances and the quieter offstage scenes is mesmerizing, and you can't help but wonder if there's some supernatural power guiding his way. Do you claim supernatural powers? I've never said anything of that kind. Number six, Jack Teller, The Score. How do you compete with Brando and De Niro? I'm Max's guy in the customs house. We should talk. Okay, bye-bye, thank you. Acting beside his idols, Norton accepts the passing of the torch and gives this average heist movie some much needed pizzazz as a single-minded thief. Now, if you just don't want to come in on it, that's fine, say no, but don't send some third-rate rent-a-thug to brush me off. You can do it like a professional. Though it's similar to the role he later played in The Italian Job, Norton's part in the score allows him to demonstrate his incredible range and believability, even in the most fleeting of scenes. Now you got a choice. You can either head for that tunnel or smile for that camera. <laughs> Number five, Lester Worm Murphy, Grounders. <laughs> With inspiration from Bugs Bunny, Norton becomes a shifty, cursing fast talker in this romanticized vision of the poker world. You know what? F you and your never ending string of boats, okay? Obnoxious but somehow charming, Norton's worm is the film's voice of unreason. Mike, Mike, we gotta get you back on the game. No, 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 no
However, the movie's most effective use of its big star talent is in the shared scenes featuring Damon and Norton. Come on, I'll play your horse, 50 bucks a letter. Yeah, when I win, are you gonna pay me back with my own money? Oh, oh, easy, relax, don't wing it, just, just step and throw, you know? The contrast between the clean-cut guy and his cheat-to-win buddy showcased the cream of the acting crop. Hey, 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 all right, take it easy, take it easy now. Aren't you supposed to like read us all right, <laughs> Number four, Monty Brogan, The 25th Hour. It's the last day of freedom for this drug dealer before his seven-year jail sentence, and Norton plays it with characteristic intelligence, thoughtfulness, and regret. Up there, I'm a skinny white boy with no friends. Those guys are gonna use me up and end me. Everything has extra meaning and energy, as Brogan realizes he'll be a different man the next time he sees his loved ones. Under Spike Lee's direction, Norton takes Brogan on a contemplative journey, keeping external turmoil to a minimum, save for one standout scene. No, f you, Montgomery Brogan. You had it all and you threw it away, you dumb f Number three, the narrator, Fight Club. This is your life, and it's ending one minute at a time. Showing his knack for portraying chaotic characters, Norton shines as the unreliable narrator beside a brilliant Brad Pitt in this macho, violent, and darkly comic adaptation of Chuck Palahniuk's novel. Oh. Mother <laughs> You hit me in the ear! Well, Jesus, I'm sorry! Ow! After beginning the film as the dejected yuppie outsider who's unhappy with life and desperate for catharsis, Norton gets to do all the bad boy stuff they could jam into one movie, earning himself a spot on the A-list. Is that your blood? Some of it, yeah. Number two, Aaron Stampler and Roy, Primal Fear. The judge is gonna ask you how you plead. N not. Not guilty. By turning on a dime from a shy, stuttering southern boy to his ruthless alter ego Roy, Norton earned a supporting actor Oscar nod. And just think, this was his feature film debut. It sounds to me like they're gonna shoot old Aaron so full of poison it's gonna come out his eyes. This courtroom thriller about an abused altar boy who's charged with murdering a much-loved archbishop could easily have been a forgettable legal drama. But thanks to Norton's range, it stands as an unmissable twist ending flick. Further questions, Your Honor? Where the hell do you think you're going? Excuse hey, me? Hey, you look at me when I'm talking to you, you bitch. Mr. Stampler! <laughs> you baby, come in here! <laughs> Number one, Derek Vineyard, American History X. For his role as the unifying force in this powerful tale of violence, racism, and redemption, Norton earned his first Best Actor Oscar nomination. Every night, thousands of these parasites stream across the border like some f***ing pinata exploded. <laughs> Don't laugh! With 30 pounds of extra muscle, he navigates the rough territory and hate speech with never-before-seen emotion and ferocity, and prevents the film from becoming a preach fest. If you come near Danny again, I will feed you your f***ing heart, Cameron. His journey from white supremacist to something more human is a career-defining role on an already stellar resume. I killed two guys, Danny. I killed them. And it didn't make me feel any different. Do you agree with our list? I'll take some respect from you, for starters. How about that? Which Edward Norton performance do you think is his best? Don't talk about right and wrong with me, man, because I just don't give a shit. For more top tens about your favorite actors, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Well, tone it down a little, all right? Tone down what, mother? Right. Never mind. <laughs>